In my experience of a few years, I have realized that it is not just that people go into marriage without being led, that is a problem. They also go into marriage without having a clear definition of marriage. Listen, whatever you cannot define, you are likely to abuse. If you do not know what a car is, maybe you use it wrong. Oh, in my wife's kitchen, there are so many, many things she uses in cooking. And many times she will come in to complain that I'm using a particular spoon for the wrong purpose. Since I didn't know what the purpose is, I need a spoon and I pick it up. Or only women know a small spoon for a small duty, a big spoon for a bigger duty. For me, a spoon is a spoon. Oftentimes, it's when I put it in my mouth and I find it unfitting that I realize I have a wrong spoon. If you can't define it, then you won't be able to use it without abusing it. So when people go into marriage who do not have a clear definition for marriage, then there can only be catastrophe. There is only one definition for marriage. Spoken by the mouth of God in Genesis. He said, it is not good for man to be alone. Let us make for him, therefore, a helpmate fit for him. Marriage is for companionship. Marriage is for help. Coming from the male to the female, from the female to the male. A mutual intercourse of two minds towards one same purpose. That's my definition of marriage. Two people working at one task. Two hearts beating as one. Maybe that is why the Bible said the two shall be one. But when people go into marriage with wrong ideas, some will say, I'm of age. You are of age? That is no reason to get married. It has, in, has nothing to do with the maturity that is necessary for marriage. Oh, some will say, people are expecting me to marry. And that's why you're going into it. That's a wrong reason. Some will say, I don't want to commit fornication. Oh, sorry to, 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 to say this. I'd rather have you sin your sin alone than cause your partner to sin a more fatal sin. If two people come together simply for the reason of sex, they're in a cheap kind of marriage. Or some will say, we need to get married so we can have children. Very, very cheap reason. Children are consequent upon marriage. Marriage must occur first before children will come. And by marriage, I mean marriage as defined by God. Two people who are not companions of each other, two people who are not friends, two people who are not fulfilling the requirements of marriage has no right to bring forth children because the children they are going to bring forth consequently are going to be spoiled by the nature of their marriage. I think the church also, after teaching people how to hear God, we should teach men and women in their youth the real meaning of marriage. Notice this. They do not have homes to copy from. Many of the homes from where our children are coming are homes built without a good definition for marriage. Please, pastors, I will. That will begin to teach these things, even from the early ages of these children. Make them realize marriage has a definition. It has a purpose. It was when God saw that Adam could not fulfill his will and mandate in the Garden of Eden that he gave him a woman who would help him fulfill such. It means to me, therefore, that just, there are so many men, there are so many things a man will never be able to do if he doesn't have a good wife. He can't do it to the pleasure of God. If he has a bad wife, he can't do it at all. May God give us good marriage.